Okay, good morning and uh, welcome once again, everyone. We'll continue with our study with regard to the keys to supernatural ministry. And uh, this morning we will pick up from where we stopped. We were talking about the subject of anointing. So there's more about the anointing, how to grow. That's the discussion we were uh, at. So let's pray and then we will uh, start off. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace in our lives. We thank you that uh, you go before us and, God, that you cause us to walk in victory, Lord, in every area of our lives. Father God, thank you that you have made provision, Lord, by your spirit for us to experience the supernatural life. And so, God, even today, as we discuss many things, Lord, we pray that you will give us the understanding we need, Lord, and uh, help us, Father God, to apply this in our lives. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we said that uh, the anointing is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, which you and I, as human vessels, can, um, when that we can be empowered by what has been made available through the Holy Spirit. We also said that the power of the Holy Spirit can destroy every yoke. Yoke is a burden and burden is always connected, uh, I mean, as far as uh, uh, the, the evil burden that we experience, right, through sin or sickness or any form of oppression, it's connected to Satan and his work against the believer uh, and against people. And that can only be broken by the power of God. And we said that the anointing carries the power, which is why if you and I recognize what the anointing of God is and recognize the anointing on our lives, we can ensure that the burdens are removed, the yokes are destroyed. We also talked about uh, the fact that there is the anointing within or which is associated with the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. The normal ministry of the Holy Spirit is to do with guidance, to do with, you know, counsel, encouragement, um, and direction. So the presence of the Holy Spirit, right, in this way, and uh, in a couple of other ways. So that's the common ministry of the Holy Spirit. Whereas there is something more that Jesus talked about when he mentioned in Acts 1.8, that you need to wait and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so that is what we refer to as the anointing upon. Through the baptism in the Holy Spirit, activation of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and carrying the power of the Holy Spirit to thwart the powers of darkness. Uh, and, you know, we, we also said as far as um, the positional reality in Christ is concerned, all of us are anointed. That's what the Bible says. In Christ Jesus, we are already anointed. 2 Corinthians 1.21. So every single one of us is anointed. So somewhere we may have this uh, concept of the anointing only for those who are in ministry or those who are um, serving the Lord uh, in certain ways. But yes, of course, there is the enabling of the Holy Spirit uh, or the anointing in, in those situations. But even apart from that, every single believer is anointed. So it's not just for um, people with certain ministries. And then we began speaking regarding activating the anointing. So activating the anointing is a term um, that we generally use associated with increased um, manifestation of the anointing, right, in our Life. So how can there be a greater manifestation? How can the anointing which we carry be put to work? So that's what activation means. And we discussed this one point through Ephesians 3, 7, that along with the call of God on our lives is our connected grace and connected gifts. What is the grace? Grace is the enabling of God to do what he has called us to do. Uh, for example, if God is calling us to be a teacher, then we will have the grace or the ability to be able to teach. If God is calling us to be, uh, uh, you know, 
you can take something else minister through music maybe then we will have that ability to be able to do that so depending on on the call of god so administration there will be a grace for administration so if you look at someone who has the grace and who does not have the grace uh, we'll find that the one who has the grace has an ease of doing things in that particular area so we were saying that when god calls us for something there is an ease or an ability to do those things that is the grace gifts are um you know again special special equipping for example if someone is called to um to lead in worship god may give them the ability maybe you know to be able to comprehend understand music and um you know, like play music or sing or something like that now if the grace and the gift are missing then we can't really flow well in that particular area if somebody who has the grace and the gift does that work then what happens is uh, it, it will be done with the power of god now take for example a clearer um a clearer example would be somebody who has the grace and gift to uh be in administration maybe at the highest level run an organization right now if somebody who does not have the grace tries doing it because they want to do it it may not work they may struggle a lot people may be affected because it's not being run properly okay however if there is somebody with the grace to do it and the gifting so they they uh, understand uh, you know the the organizational strategies they understand you know how human resource works they understand how finance works they understand you know how systems work processes work so uh, they have a an innate or inbuilt ability to do certain things and of course you know they uh, need to develop that with knowledge and experience which hopefully they have done now that will be a very powerful combination uh, in order to see god's work done in that area of administration now if there is somebody who doesn't have the grace it they will not be able to take the organization to the levels that it can go with someone who has the grace so i think that's a very clear example right so similarly when it comes to our ministry basically we asked the question what is the grace of god on my life uh, and i remember one of you asked how do we know what is god's grace so for that i think we just have to um, uh try so you just step out you just do certain things and you figure out like you know you have the grace to do it or you just don't have the grace to do it uh, and as we are serving the lord eventually we receive that idea so generally that's how we find out uh, but even otherwise god can god can speak to us right at the start or the beginning for example if you look at uh, apostle paul okay god told ananias that he is going to be an apostle to the gentiles so he already knew the calling so with the apostolic calling comes the grace the apostolic grace and certain abilities which obviously paul had and he recognized it like sort of in the beginning itself he had some idea and when he goes and he gives his explanation you know towards the um uh, uh, like with the kings and all uh, in the end the governor the king he says this is what i have been called to do so he knows his call so sometimes the point is god may reveal it ahead of time that we have certain graces so like that also we can find out and then we start to walk in it um so when we recognize the grace and the gift of god we must start walking in it we start operating in that grace then the anointing is manifest and then it is a blessing for the people uh, and let's also know that the anointing that we carry different ones of us maybe at various levels now let's go back to the organizational aspect of things uh, if we take up a, you know like a huge organization maybe a, some kind of a university that is thriving right and it's become global and it's doing so well if you consider somebody who's running that university as compared to maybe a person who is running uh, a school which is you know maybe doing okay in that in that particular region uh and then compare that to a person who is running maybe a study center 
which caters to a, about just about 100 students. All of them have the grace of administration, organization, but their capacities are different, isn't it? Because one is doing it at a certain capacity, another is doing it another capacity, but here's the third person who's doing it at the highest capacity. So we can take the same grace, but we would notice that people are enabled as per their calling. So if we consider, you know, you take up uh, uh, Apostle Paul as a teacher of the word, the way they clarify the revelation of God uh, and explain things is mighty, it's powerful. But if we take another teacher in scripture, right, you just go back to maybe another person who's teaching, they may still be teaching, but it may not be at the level of Apostle Paul because his calling is to be an apostle. You, are you all getting what I'm trying to say? So it also has measures or levels. Um, so just because I'm operating in the capacity or the grace that God has given me, I cannot, I cannot imagine that I am going to become like, like for example, if we take teaching, scriptures say, teach one another. Okay, you must, you, by now you must have been able to teach one another. The writer of the Hebrews, he says in Hebrews 5. Uh, and if we take up, you know, Aquila, Priscilla, they were teachers of the word. But if you take up Paul, that's another level. Are they all teachers? Yes. Do they all have the grace to teach? Yes. But it depends on the call of God. So one cannot expect a believer who's just, you know, like teaching as per the instruction of God's word to probably become a Paul later. Maybe that's not the call of that believer. However, he has the grace to teach. Okay, so let's understand the measures. Why are we talking about all this? Because if we recognize God's grace, then we invest in that direction. Isn't it? Like I can, if suppose I can teach and I can lead worship, I have the anointing for worship and I have the anointing for maybe mercy ministry, right? I need to recognize which one is the sort of the greatest grace. So, if it is teaching, then of course I involve in mercy ministry, of course I involve in leading worship, but I'm investing more in teaching because the anointing is there, the power is there. So the more I do what I am called to do, the greater the manifestation of the glory of God. Okay, so that's how we think and that's the point that we were trying to drive home. Yes, please can ask. Uh, Non-ministry as in like what, a corporate what life and other things when you're saying admin and other things. So huh. uh, that grace and gifts of God and the anointing flows in our uh, areas of life, ministry arena and also outside ministry arena also. Yes. So, uh, we see in Romans 12, there is a reference. You know why I mentioned administration and organization? Because it is listed in the grace gifts. Got it? So that is the reason uh, I actually mentioned it. Let me see if I can quickly point to the... Huh. So look at this. Uh, from Romans chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace. You see? So gifts are according to the grace. Let's remember that. Ro uh, Romans 12, 6. That is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches... In teaching, he who exhorts, in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So there are a couple of things here that are listed out for us, right? But it's not, I believe it's not exhaustive. So uh, there are many others 
like we we see you know lead here and teach uh, and different things so in that manner we can recognize i'm sure there are many more abilities that god gives yeah of course why not why not why not god may gi uh, give us certain you know abilities outside of this list yeah so we just recognize it and it's most useful when we do this sometimes what happens out of a sense of maybe competition or ignorance we keep trying to um do things in a different area and then we are struggling and uh, we are like okay i'm doing it i'm doing it it's not being fruitful why there's no power in what i'm doing one of the reasons could be that we are not called to it and so the anointing is not that there'll be no anointing but it's not as strong as we would like it to be so sometimes right um it it makes a difference to switch to the best grace that god has given us okay yeah any any questions or thoughts yes please so ma'am it's about uh, grace only so is it correct or is it okay to deserve for grace which we don't have means like for example i'll tell about myself see i'm 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 having that grace of playing instruments and worshiping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so is it okay like deserving the grace that you know having a, being a good pastor connecting people i don't have that grace but i want that grace is it okay to ask god to have so yes bless you see because uh when when we are talking about grace and gifts it's not like god only gives one grace there can be multiple graces right for example if one is called to be a pastor which is to shepherd the people connected to that grace comes teaching because i should be able to teach them right connected to that grace exhortation to be able to ex encourage them right and also flow in the prophetic so there are many connected things like that now uh there are other passages of scripture that you know also show us that like when we delight ourselves in the lord he gives us the desires of our heart so there are some godly desires that can emerge in us so though you're a musician if there is this godly desire as you're pursuing god to want the grace of pastoral ministry it could be from god and where god is saying i want you to to grow in more than one grace so how do we check it out just pursue it just go with it just take the steps as i mentioned earlier right you got to try it you got to get into it that's when you will notice whether you know it's it's meant for you or not if it's so strictly not meant for us then uh you know god himself you can just pray and say lord please let me know god might just speak to you in a dream vision and say no bless you that's not meant for you uh okay so what if you're not called for that ministry there is no harm desiring good things there's no harm you can desire it yeah we can desire it there's no harm desire for it begin to walk along that path and also keep asking lord if it's not for me make it very clear and god is faithful to show us you will not end up being confused you will you'll know after a while whether or not it's for you if it's not just leave it aside and move forward that's it yeah okay god huh. has chosen us to go to the ends of the world right and uh, we have grace in some areas but we want to build his kingdom and we want to go and start something so in that area uh we need grace of god yes so like uh, if uh, i'm not able to tell no it's okay try um okay. like like we are going to start god's uh, like church and work all. yeah so, god's work yeah so it's i'm only good in some things mm. but i want to have good in other things also because uh, we don't have people 
so in that case what we can do yes so see initially uh, when we are starting out for ex you're talking about the example of let's say church planting right uh, you're the only person and maybe you don't have people then you need multiple graces to be able to organize to be able to plan to be able to preach to be able to counsel lead worship a to z so for that time duration uh, you can pray and ask god god sustain me give me the grace to so to some extent the grace will manifest okay but we can also pray and say god send in the people with the grace because that is the best thing when we have people with the grace now when we study about uh, i think in the in the book pastor has written either kingdom builders or uh, house of god he says putting the right people at the right place at the right time so as we are doing god's work and we start to pray god sends in the right people and they have the grace ah uh, yeah god's kingdom so uh, then what we do is we just let go and we share with them the vision of what god has given us uh, as they join the ministry and from there on we work with them so they start doing for example you know if it comes to worship ministry and i'm not good at le leading worship as a pastor i can share the teaching and the guidelines and the vision and oversee the worship ministry and that person can handle because they are fabulous uh, with the grace the gift the ability everything god has given them so that's why also in the kingdom of god various ones have different different anointings and we've all got to work together that's the way to see um, god's work done in wholeness yeah mic please please send people like yes. with grace yes yes sir yes because see the other way of doing it is we try we we only keep doing everything uh but it won't be excellent it will something or the other will become average no how much i mean tell me how much can one person do we can't uh, produce excellence so for excellence you know and and to demonstrate that excellence of anointing we need many people with their grace and their ability and when all of us are working together then then that is uh that is the best way yeah sure great thank you for those questions really interesting questions uh, online students any any queries i just want to ask like at a particular time there will be like time we don't have grace but we have to do those works so what to do <laughs> okay we don't have grace but you have to do those things no yeah see because it's temporary i guess it's fine just till the person with the grace comes we try to manage it and uh, obviously god is so merciful he'll give little bit grace to uh, adjust for that time i suppose yeah sure so it's it's like emergency <laughs> you can't help it yeah like how i didn't get it why Oh, okay okay uh see when it when uh, again when we talk about the grace no uh if let's say if if it's about a ministry then we understand there's a grace for that ministry or there is no grace for the ministry but when it comes to um you know like some basic level of teaching or basic level of uh uh manifesting the gifts of the spirit like prophecy and when i say basic i mean for the believer that every believer can do we already have the grace for that so we can do it that 
so till we have somebody who is exclusively anointed for that coming in we can all handle it i i don't think uh, you know it's like we can't at all does it make sense what i'm saying yeah so supernatural everyone can flow in it okay i'll quickly pick the question here in the chat and then if any more questions are there let's talk about it because actually the subject is very practical so if i just tell the theory and go it will not help much so it's good that you're asking questions all right so abhishek sagar he says when somebody has the gifts but not able to see the fruit then what does the one think this is not the calling for him or her so uh, this is another question like the the gifts are there so that means the grace is there but fruit is not there okay so how to assess this in such a situation if we are clear that god has called us in this ministry this might mean that one needs to persevere one needs to persevere one needs to develop develop means to increase what has been given to us that means you know i'll have to work hard i'll have to understand uh, where i must improve so it's all of that so no, that way so you develop or you nurture the gift nurture yourself and the fruit will come okay so sagar in the case that we are cleared of being called and being given the grace and the gifts it's a matter of perseverance we don't let go because sooner or later the fruit will manifest the fruit has to manifest so this is a different situation we don't quit in this case okay i hope that addresses your question sagar please let me know okay yeah he says uh, okay thank you all right um, any other same like same like yeah. sagar's question okay so like we know the many pastors even we had a afternoon sessions of orientation week huh. they told about they'll have the gifts but years of years it will let use the power or something will happen even i saw many pastors they have the gift of prophecy they have gift of healing and all but starting it will be more effective many people thousands of people but now these days the people they won't even care also means what it be the reason maybe yeah so you're saying what if the capacity or the power of the anointing diminishes over a period of time uh um, but actually blessy it should be the other way it should never be this way see uh there is a scripture in uh, romans 11:29 which says that the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable that means when god calls us to something i remember there was a sermon that pastor ashish had preached many years ago where he said that when god opens the door for you he wants you to walk through it and he's never going to shut it on you that was very encouraging for me because i was in a lot of self doubt that am i really called is this is what i'm supposed to do you know i was really in that that place of doubting you could say or or questioning and that's the time when the sermon came that when god has opened the door uh he knows what he's doing it's not he's not going to shut it okay so you've got to confidently learn to walk through that open door now when we are given the anointing for something what is god's expectation go back to john 15 where it says uh, you know like when when we bear fruit the father is glorified so what is god's expectation anything that is given to us if the life of god is flowing through us fruitfulness is the result you know colossians 1 verses 9 10 we pray that like uh, uh, that uh, the knowledge of the will of god uh, increase in us and that you know we are fruitful in every good work so god wants us so everywhere you see in scripture there is the understanding of increase 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 so that's why i said if we see that anointing is decreasing something is not correct in what is going on 
so why does it decrease there are many reasons why it could decrease maybe one didn't learn how to develop it you know they remained at the earlier stage only like let's say you know i am starting to uh, see the power of god in the prophetic and it's very very uh, amazing but from that point i never grew in my knowledge of the prophetic i never grew in my practice of the prophetic nothing i did so what happens to the gift is see even paul says stir up the gift of god if i don't stir it up it will remain inert not that god took it away no but it's become if we may use the word inactive okay so when it becomes inactive it's almost like some of the things that we have if you have a vehicle and you've not used it for 2 3 years there are some issues you can't just start it like that you have to work on it and grease it and all and then kind of begin to but any time you can start using it okay so that way what happens is the gift right which is showing up so powerfully slowly it kind of looks like it's not working god it's not so powerful because one did not develop it that is one major issue second issue is um maybe heart attitudes because uh, again i've heard this from many pastors they say that uh, in the beginning when god calls us to do his work you know if you and i can recall the first time we preached the first time we read wor- led worship or the first time any uh, opportunity was given to us how much we studied how much we prayed you know i remember first time i preached whole night i didn't sleep i was praying i was praying i was like god you have to bless me you have to bless the people i literally could not sleep and i just messaged one of my friends like maybe late early morning hours saying i'm not able to pray, sleep please pray for me i don't know what's happening am i anxious am i uh, tensed i don't know because that's how serious i was about the assignment which was given right but what happens once you're doing it again and again and again you know there's a little bit of familiarity which is okay there's a little bit of familiarity which is okay but if the attitude changes you know if i if i don't I still have that high regard or somewhere there's pride somewhere there's this feeling of ah you know what is there i've done thousand times i'll do it you know so it it can happen to us as we are serving god which is the most dangerous thing it should never happen in the beginning we are red hot we are passionate fire for the lord but later the attitude gets very if i may use the word rusted if we are not careful that's a terrible thing that should never happen never lose that initial honor you know the first time we said oh thank you god you gave me this opportunity every time we should have that attitude that's when the anointing will be fresh that's when because we are going to god with the right attitude so these are the two reasons bless you one is not developing it then it becomes dull and it just becomes inert second is when wrong heart attitude when pride or self dependence um dishonor for god all those things happen uh that's not nice and uh, we should all be very careful because it's very subtle you know we are, we are, i am only telling all this but there's a real danger of for me only i keep telling myself that because it's very subtle it's very subtle when god gives an opportunity before we know it we kind of slip into that zone which we should never slip into we should be as honoring and regarding of god the thousandth time that we are doing what we are doing as much as we did it the first time that's the heart attitude if we maintain that heart attitude surely the anointing will have its power and there will be a an increase in the anointing as you keep serving the lord so that's how it should be and yeah one more thing ma'am there are other pastors also they'll use gifts and talents uh, like uh-huh. a business okay in, especially in telugu states so they'll have that prophecy and uh, miracles they'll do but it yeah. it looks like a business people they'll attract people so because of those pastors 
so many of unbelievers and uh, the people who don't believe holy spirit prophecy all this they'll tell like it's really fake there is no prophecy there is no visions and all means like because of them yeah. so how can we tell them like it's real see how can we tell the the unbelievers or so also some christians they don't believe because of them see they are doing business it's really fake yeah so see there is a negative impact and it is hard to it's hard to reset it because when it's done in a on a large scale like in a public way uh, <clears throat> it does confuse the unbeliever so it's very complex uh, bless you uh, if we have the opportunity to speak to people we can and if god has kept us in a place where we can influence uh, at a large scale for example if there's a wrong teaching and one is anointed for teaching they can put out the right teaching you know so then what happens it kind of counters the wrong thing that's going on so in all these ways we can try to uh, try to rectify it but i think the that the thing that we all can do is to just pray and say lord your name must never be dishonored so please help us to sort this situation out yeah sure okay Huh? Yes. Oh, my first sermon. Yeah, I still remember. I can never forget my first sermon. Uh, the topic of the sermon was seeking God, and uh, when I was asked to write it, because it was my first time ever, ever, ever write writing my own sermon and preaching it. But when I started writing it. that is when something amazing happened because as i was writing it no the scriptures are coming like it's just flowing and i was i i it was like a shock to me i was like why how are the scriptures coming i don't know why uh, god is helping me like this so i think my experience was of god helping me and i could never forget it because when i finished writing that sermon i was amazed i was like wow this act connect and god is helping me when i spoke yeah see the 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 normal nervousness and all was there plus pastor ashish was sitting in front so <laughs> i was like really like oh my goodness i hope i don't make any mistakes but the good part is pastor had already said i'm going to listen and i will give you feedback So thankfully he gave some feedback and he said look when you spoke this you could have said it like this you could have said it was so helpful it was so helpful so the no normal human you know nervousness all that was definitely there and uh, yeah it was not perfect it still is not perfect but thank god for you know feedback correction we keep improving sure okay uh, yes so lucy was asking for uh, to repeat the scripture in colossians i've uh, put it on the chat colossians 1 9 and 10 uh, so yeah i think we'll have to stop here i can't believe we discussed only one point <laughs> <laughs> but it's important right it's really important and it's so helpful mm, uh, yeah we should be able to complete it complete the course uh, but yes let's think about all these things because they are so relevant to us uh, let's pray and close i don't know if any of our uh, online students were trying to speak but unfortunately i couldn't hear i, I saw some yes teacher yes sister i was i, I, I had a question i can't do it i'm unable to hear you my apologies um if you can hold on to that thought let's pick it up in the next class And yes for now yes, let's yes. Uh, pray and close yeah my apologies for that uh, can anyone from the class pray we look to the lord in prayer A loving heavenly father we thank you for this discussion that we have had and uh, everything that we have learned we have heard we pray even though it was one point uh, i believe that you have spoken to the depth of our heart and removed all anxiety and give us more clarity as we continue to minister in your calling oh lord we pray for your grace in each one of our lives we thank you for nancy ma'am for her teaching and her passion continue to bless our life family and ministry and fill us all with your peace and your presence in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you everyone god bless you